First, I'd like to thank my co-organizers for putting this together. I'm really glad that this happened. And uh, in the past uh, three days, I learned a lot of uh, stuff and already, and I look forward to more tomorrow and on Friday. So uh, this is a joint work with uh, two speakers, and uh, Anthony and the GN you have uh, seen in the past uh, two days. And uh, this thing really started when Anthony visited Berkeley to give a PyMath seminar. And uh, yeah, and uh, before that, I don't even know what lean blotting is, and maybe know the definition, but uh, really, uh, uh, and uh, learned a lot from Anthony, had a lot of fun. And uh, this is the paper we put on archive uh, at the end of August. Uh, we would like to address one question in this paper, uh, which is how to prepare ground state with a zero initial overlap. Uh, the setup of the problem of the ground state is uh, you are given the Hamiltonian H, and uh, you want to find the eigenvector, psi zero, and eigenvalue, lambda zero. Getting either of them is QMA hard in the worst case, so you need some assumptions. Uh, most of the, uh, the most common additional assumption is you have a good initial state, uh, which means that you have a UI that is not too long, then you can use, apply this UI to a state, you get an initial state called a phi, then P0 or gamma square given by the square of the overlap is at least one over poly n. It's a very strong assumption, it's not clear at all how you can get there, but without this, uh, you are almost uh, uh, like uh, uh, you go nowhere, uh, which means that most of the works, including QPE, many QPE methods, adopt this assumption to get somewhere. It's a good, sufficient condition. Uh, you give a very nice tutorial talk uh, three weeks ago, and on Tuesday we heard uh, a number of speakers, uh, uh, Lexing, uh, Peter, and Jian, talking about uh, this thing in this workshop. The difficulty of a QPE and uh, post-QPE methods, QSP, LCU, so on and so forth, they're the, of the same thing, which is they are essentially filtering methods. By filtering, it means that you have some good things. You have an initial state with the overlap P0. That's called the good. All the rest, we call the bad. Then you do one way or another to filter things out. You filter away the bad stuff. So originally, these are the contributions and you make them as small as possible. But this part, you cannot amplify it better than quadratic amplification. So if P0 is very small, then you need to pay in terms of the number of repetitions, which is roughly P0 inverse. If P0 is a zero, there's no good stuff, and then it's just dead. So that's why we, you need this uh, like uh, uh, P0 assumption. However, uh, the QMA harness never said, I mean, this P0 is necessary. So then that's exactly what they were trying to do. Um, but before that, is good initial overlap assumption for strongly correlated quantum systems, especially chemistry systems, is that like uh, reasonable? So this is really uh, started with a conversation about uh, two years ago that's uh, pioneered by Garnet Chen and Zhong Hao Li. And uh, Yu Tong and uh, I were part of it, this large team. Uh, so this paper, I mean, is a little bit controversial. Different people have different takes on it. But uh, let me just uh, say one of the message that one of the messages that's of relevance to this talk is that you not only try the best Hartree-Fox state, but you also try some optimized uh, uh, Hartree-Fox state or DMRG state with a bond dimension one and you increase the size of the cluster, this is a set of iron sulfur cluster systems, you find that there's some exponential decrease uh, with respect to uh, the, uh, of the initial overlap with respect to the system dimension. Which means that, I mean, it's not necessarily the end of the story. You can use better ways, multi-slated determinants, much better quantum chemistry methods, much better DMRG methods to prepare the states, but at least it shows that this initial state preparation problem is indeed a serious concern. And this side shows that if you want to use another very popular method with the adiabatic state preparation, you also have some other problems. OK? Um, so just for curiosity, why not try some more advanced chemical methods? Since among the authors, there are best quantum chemists. Uh, you can, yeah. And uh, this is because for the single slated determinants, the 
uh, way to prepare the ground state. Uh, the uh, state on the quantum computer is the clearest. You can do the Gibbons rotation. All the others, especially the variational tries, is a little bit unclear how to implement that, those and how to optimize. And therefore, we haven't tried those. But uh, definitely, there is room to further improve. But uh, once, yeah, there is another maybe uh, question that's of relevance to the community of trying to find quantum advantage is that once you identify a strongly correlated quantum system that you can indeed prepare a good initial state, uh, you also want to make sure that uh, try to further improve the accuracy is very hard for the quantum uh, classical computer, right? So otherwise, you just solve it uh, classically. So that's another thing one should uh, keep in mind. OK, so this talk is about the algorithm to try to eliminate this P0 dependence. Uh, the QMA hardness says that, I mean, you just uh, cannot just, uh, you need to replace it by something else. and. Uh, um, and this is what I said earlier. This assumption is sufficient. You can run QPE once you have it, but it's not necessary. Uh, what about some other assumptions? Uh, there are other ways you can do it. Maybe you have a good parameterized circuit uh, that can just do some magic. You can do some adiabatic thing that, I mean, 20 years ago, a lot of people are very excited about that. I guess people are now more sober about this thing. And uh, Lindblad, I guess, uh, were pretty much at the stage about 20 years ago. So uh, a lot of people are excited about it. So in 20 years, we'll see, right? <laughs> so uh, <laughs> I, mean, oh, I guess we'll yeah, be busy yeah, in the middle. And uh, just in the past year or so, uh, there are a lot of uh, ideas, uh, open quantum system ideas, uh, for preparing thermal states. We have heard uh, a number today. And this, uh, uh, yeah, Anthony anointed this to be the open quantum system day, and uh, so uh, uh, yeah, so uh, yeah, so I mean, uh, yeah, so Anthony and the collaborators has uh, uh, papers on this, and uh, this is the IBM group, and uh, Rao at all, and uh, has another approach, but uh, that one requires very because uh, a rounding promise, uh, which is really hard to implement. And uh, there's a little bit of a different approach, though, by Toby Cubitt. a very nice approach, uh, also called quantum dissipative approach, but uh, it's quite different from the Lindblad type of things. And also, there's an explicit uh, exponential dependence. So it, I mean, without further modifications, uh, it wouldn't scale to larger systems. So ours are more closer related to this type of uh, approaches you have heard today. Uh, the key explicit? explicit means that the cost uh, let's say if you run a lean blood, maybe the mixing time grows exponentially with respect to n, but you don't know that a priori. And this thing, you just know very clearly the cost will grow exponentially. Yeah, I mean, th that's uh, the difference between the explicit dependence and implicit dependence. Like uh, you run a QPE for a state with uh, exponentially small overlap, you know explicitly it's going to cost exponentially. For the post-election, uh, post that you need to observe these zeros that Right. I think the, the, the design of the algorithm, there is just a, some exponential scaling factor with respect to the system size. OK. So the key theoretical assumption is that we hope uh, the mixing time grows polynomially in. We don't have uh, a lot of evidence so far. And uh, that uh, really determines whether in 20 years we're still very excited or less excited about this approach. Yes? But why is that important? Why is polynomial in? Uh, well, uh, you want this to be BQP, and you want to solve that polynomial with respect to the system size. Otherwise, uh, I mean, classically, you can, if it were exponential, classically, you can so just solve it, right? So, classically, you can pay exponential cost to solve this uh, n qubit uh, physics ground state problem. Yeah? Then, if there is no evidence at this point, is there some intuition in your work to that you could expect that? Um, I think, uh, yeah, I mean, I think there is uh, some hint, but uh, I wouldn't say very strong. Maybe in a year or so, things will be different. But uh, let's uh, l say that so far, there is uh, some wishful thinking that uh, there is polynomial growth. But uh, maybe with a year or two, there are some uh, uh, much more solid uh, works uh, can come out from this community. OK. So the, how I would like to understand the Lindblad idea for ground state of preparation. So you, you say that here, I mean, you know, of course, you're going to discover more than a homophobia. 
Yeah, more than Hong Kong. This is more from the last assumption? Uh, from this, yeah. So you, you're designing the linear blooding that has a polynomial in this. You're designing the blooding explicitly, but you can, but it's not guaranteed. It's not guaranteed. Yeah. But it's not exponentially scale, uh, it's not expli it doesn't have an explicit dependence on, uh, it doesn't have an ex explicit exponential dependence either. Okay, any other questions? Good. Uh, so uh, uh, how I would like to think about this thing is uh, uh, the Lindblad idea is really nice in the sense that it changes the idea of a filtering to something I call the shoveling. So which is a filtering is you keep the good stuff, you throw away the bad stuff. And if the amount of good things is zero, then you just have zero. But shoveling is you're constructing the CPTP map. You shovel the bad part towards the good part. Sounds like too good to be true, but actually you can do it. So it's like you have these bad things, right? But every step, you're constructing the CPTP map that you go from higher energy to lower energy, lower energy to even lower energy, and all the way to the ground state, and boom, you all the way prepare, boost this thing to one. And uh, I mean, before I mean, Anthony's visit, I mean, I wouldn't even imagine such an approach would be possible, but then realized, okay, actually it works. So uh, uh, it works, if it works, then which means there's a polynomial mixed in time, then it should succeed with the probability one. There's no post-selection whatsoever. Another thing of a mixing time, and that's a really baked into the definition of a mixing time, that is if the system mixes, uh, means uh, it's ergodic, but also uh, the, the, there's uh, some finite time guarantee, then by definition, the, uh, the work, uh, <coughs> the cost, is almost independent of P0. You can start from anywhere and just uh, it will work. So. Sorry for these two features, and do you mean the locations of eigenvalue change? The I, no, the eigenvalues, they don't change, but the, you start from some initial state which has uh, some uh, distribution, right? I mean, I'm writing this as a pure state, but uh, should really interpret that as a mixed state. Then uh, uh, during the algorithm, you're really shoveling the bad parts towards the high energy towards the low energy. In the end, you just shovel everything to the ground state, and boom, you're end, end with a pure state. Sounds like magic, but uh, yeah, it works. So uh, the main results is an algorithm. Uh, we uh, assume that uh, the, there are some, uh, uh, so this is the eigen decomposition. We care about lambda zero. We assume there's a gap. The gap or a gap has a lower bound called the delta. Uh, uh, the main query, there are query other things too, but the main cost should be uh, Hamiltonian simulation, which means that we can measure the cost by the total simulation time. We have seen that during the uh, workshop. And uh, uh, yeah, I didn't change it. Uh, okay, ho hopefully this is the updated version. So the error is uh, measured by the trace norm of rho, uh, so, or Schottel one norm, depends on how you uh, say it, with respect to some dynamics. And uh, uh, so this uh, uh, some dynamics, I'm gonna uh, clarify it later. And hopefully this dynamics converges to the ground state. It does the following things. You can prepare the ground state robustly from, uh, from zero overlap. It just involves one jump operator. In the whole day, we have heard a lot of jump operators to satisfy detail balance. For this one, because of the singularity of uh, the density matrix, you just have occupation number one and the zero elsewhere. You can actually just uh, work with a one jump operator. In terms of the simulation, you just uh, do one ancilla qubit. And this uh, is also, uh, the idea is uh, other speakers have talked about. For example, you can do the cleave one type of unraveling and uh, the, gives you the uh, one ancilla qubit. There are two types of algorithms. Uh, they actually only differ slightly in the sense of the time discretization parameter you're using. But the interpretation are completely different. First is you write down the Lindblad-in dynamics and just faithfully discretize this Lindblad-in dynamics with some good numerical schemes. Good means that the, uh, uh, at each step t, uh, or you discretize the time step t, the row, the density matrix, and the 
continuous one, you measure by the trace norm, they should all be bounded by epsilon. In this case, because of the difficulty of discretizing the uh, lean blood in dynamics and the jump part, you, the dissipative part, you cannot just arbitrarily flip them towards plus time or minus time. It's like you cannot inversely do the heat equation. Uh, you have uh, some uh, low order scheme. This may not be necessarily be the best thing you can do, but uh, it's uh, hard to significantly improve on that without uh, making the algorithm much more complicated. Roughly speaking, the cost would be uh, some uh, relative spectral gap. Uh, this is relative in the sense that if this is the absolute gap, then you normalize your Hamiltonian, this is the relative gap. Then you have some uh, relative gap inverse and t squared epsilon to the minus one. And this O ones are coming from uh, uh, like a quadratures. So this is uh, sort of expected, which is uh, first order accuracy. A surprising thing is that because we don't care the, about the, uh, uh, the dynamics in the middle, what we care about is whether it goes to the fixed point. As long as it, even if it takes a different trajectory, as long as it goes to the same fixed point, you're still happy, which means that it is possible to design a certain discrete time dynamics so that in the middle, it actually differs from the continuous one. The error is order one, but doesn't matter. As long as this discrete one still fixes the ground state and still converges to the same thing, then you're happy. This, what this means is even though you're doing some sort of like a first order trotter, like a splitting, things like that, uh, and you, uh, uh, you pay a big error, just ignore it. Hopefully, this discrete dynamic still mixes. That the proof may be even harder than the continuous one, but uh, numerically you can do it. And uh, then you can find that there is some uh, significant uh, improvement in terms of the cost. First of all, this H is gone. The relative gap is improved to uh, absolute gap, and this is really because. The relative gap partly comes from the first order trotter splitting, and now that part of the error essentially is gone because uh, that's not part of the definition of the error. Then this t is improved, a quadratic improvement in terms of uh, 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 in terms of t. That is again because you don't have the trotter first order trotter error. There's arbitrary polynomial improvement in epsilon. This choice of a word is uh, uh, deliberate in the sense that it's not super polynomial. Super polynomial means that, I mean, you just essentially have a C infinity function and uh, you do a Fourier truncation, it's a super polynomial. This is different. This is more of a high order trotter type of a one over P type of O1. So the meaning of this two O1 is slightly different. So this is an arbitrary polynomial improvement in the procedure. And uh, there is a here exponential improvement in the uh, norm of, uh, with respect to the norm of H, but uh, because we're measuring the cost in terms of the total Hamiltonian simulation time, we expect that the cost would be proportional to this anyway. So if you measure in terms of the gate complexity, there will be a quadratic improvement in terms of the uh, norm of the Hamiltonian. Any question about? Uh, yeah. So this discrete and continuous version, uh, the, 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 the main difference is the assumption is different. One is the continuous dynamics mix. In right. Ways, yeah. Mean, yeah. The, in practice, the modification is extremely small, which is you just run a lean blood dynamics, close your eye, and run it with a large time step. But the assumption, as you said, is completely different, which says the mixing time, this is just to, to simulate the dynamics to some t. Uh, I mean, discrete one you need to multiply, right, by delta t. And uh, uh, the mixing time of the two may be different, but if they are the same, then this is the problem. Yeah. So the is, is kind of same or is it The same. <coughs> uh, at least, uh, let's say, the same because we don't have a characterization of the entire set of the, uh, of the, of the points. So what we know is uh, for the ground state, it is uh, fixed both by the continuous and discrete dynamics. And the T is your capital T is your capital T is time, simulation time. Uh, if you, if the word the mixing time, then you plug it in, right? You, you simulate it to the mixing time. Yeah, so essentially keys are mixing time. Yeah, yeah, keys mixing time. Uh, it's just me. If I try to consider arbitrary simulation time, not just the mixing time, so the first, and uh, you can really capture the trajectory, but the second one. It maybe. doesn't. Yeah, it's just something. But in the end, hopefully, it goes to the same ground state. Uh, 
So on, did you mean like you own, you can only choose the T should be the missing time in the second result? Right. So if you were to use this one, which is large lean blood, uh, uh, like a large time step to simulate this lean blood dynamics, is just horrible. But uh, it somehow goes to the the hope is goes to the same fixed point. Yeah. So sorry, we're we're trying to approximate the continuous time path with the discrete time path, right? Just go to the same path, right? The same path that it takes. Uh, yeah, that's why there's a, with respect to some dynamics, right? So, so there's a, a discrete version of the dynamics, and this one, because you needed to define epsilon. Uh, but the idea is both of these dynamics converge to the fixed point, which is the ground state. Then you do get uh, the ground state to error epsilon in so space norm. You're not concerned about like, maybe like doing overshooting and like letting it, like, if the time How do you overshoot? And right, so because it's, uh, yeah, that, the, it's, yeah, it, yeah, yeah, the it thing is, it go, never overshoots. It doesn't come back. It doesn't come it, back. It, yeah, it doesn't come back. Okay, yeah, yeah. By design, it never comes back. Uh, but just the hard part, part is the sweet time you make, like, you're simulating in semi group at time one. Yeah, 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 yeah. So exactly that. Yeah, yeah, it is a discretization time, but, uh, yeah. Whether you're just exponentially in the uh, semi group. Right, right, right. It's not even the same semi group. It's not even the same semi group. Yeah. It's that time generated. I think that's what you mean. No, so, so the, the, the after discretization, this lean blob thing is just implementing the quantum channel, right? Which kind of approximates, uh, the idea is when the time step is small enough, then it approximates the, uh, the e to the l or l dagger, I mean delta t. But uh, the idea is it doesn't when delta t is large, but it doesn't matter as long as you just uh, do this for m times, and it mixes, then you don't care. Yeah. But the still, it, you can directly show this fixes the ground state. The choice of either Chorter or lower uh, scheme is because you want one as you know? Uh, but there are multiple reasons. And uh, one and is one of them, but also it's not that easy to design high order trotter when you want to split the, uh, the, uh, the dissipative and the coherent part. Although we have heard there's better schemes, but uh, I mean, those things are not that easy to implement, right? Yeah. And uh, this one says it just doesn't matter. Or it may not matter. So, so is the mixing time to achieve some particular overlap with the ground state, or is it like to achieve, like achieve constant? Mixing time is actually a very strong concept, which says that you start from anywhere, it will converge to the ground state up to some accuracy. Uh, I mean, it says constant accuracy, but really uh, you can boost it to absolute accuracy very easily. Start from anywhere. So if I understand the correctly, within the discrete time con context, Basically, the, the idea behind it is that given that from everywhere that you start, in the end, you should get to the same point. It doesn't matter if you get on the trajectory from another point. It, it doesn't matter? If you get on the, on the trajectory from another starting point. Yeah, it just doesn't matter. Yeah, so it's a very robust. Uh, is there a relationship to imaginary time evolution? Surely there must be some penalty for non-unitary dynamics. No, not necessarily. I mean, as you can see later, it's a very transparent uh, algorithm. How, how do you end up with a vector which has like, one eigenvector? Surely there must be some non unitary Yeah, yeah, th yeah there's some non unitary stuff, but it's a CPTP. <laughs> um, yeah. How do you guarantee that there's like one unique fixed point? I don't know. Uh, well, but uh, uh, I'll maybe say something not as strong as you like in the next slide. Any other question? Um, yeah. Would you see any advantages in a continuous time? Like Could be. We don't know. I mean, but uh, it does. I think the surprising thing is that you don't lose as much as you think when you do discrete time. Oh, yeah. We have no idea. I mean, I mean, we really don't know. Much about the mixing time, right? I'm going to show you numerical results, though. Yeah, I mean, not still very preliminary, but uh, say something, right? Okay. Any other question? Okay. So other results uh, about mixing time. If we could say something strong, that would be the main results. 
but uh, I mean, uh, but uh, still, there are some results. Uh, the first one is uh, that uh, uh, with some random coupling uh, uh, matrix assumption, which is motivated from ETH, the eigenstate thermalization hypothesis, but uh, not quite the same as ETH, uh, then you can show that starting from diagonal row zero, for example, maximally mixed state, but also you can start from any diagonal distribution, then this one is indeed the unique fixed point. So that one, you cannot show the mix in time, but uh, it's not actually not that hard to show that this is the unique fixed, uh, fixed point. You just uh, write down the dynamics, and uh, everything else just uh, flows to the ground state. And uh, there couldn't be any other eigenstate that is the fixed point. So that is uh, one thing. Uh, that's one result you can show. But uh, I mean, has uh, almost uh, no relevance to practical implementation, because uh, I mean, you, how do you choose this random coupling matrix uh, uh, in the simulation? But uh, it's uh, some results that is good to know. Uh, the second is, uh, uh, sounds stronger, but actually, uh, in, because the assumption is too strong, you can also think it's weaker, but still good half. That is, with random coupling matrix, you have additional structures on the eigenvalue distribution. If you do have, I mean, those gets a little bit more technical, and you can actually show poly n mixing time. Uh, it's uh, not guaranteed at all. This is actually the path towards poly n mixing time uh, because conditions are, I mean, hard to check. But uh, I won't have time to talk about that if you're interested. Uh, I mean, other co authors are here and uh, the paper is online. I'll mainly talk about algorithm. So, um, uh, the some numerical results, this is uh, not a very large system because uh, we need to simulate uh, this uh, lean blot on a classical computer, and we have learned that there are much better classical algorithms uh, to do it, so hopefully we'll be able to scale this up and uh, to do some more convincing numerical results, or at least to see where the trend is going. But this is what we have so far. It's a six-side transverse field IC model. Uh, you can compare the lean blot simulation time which means that you do the uh, lean blood uh, simulation, continuous time, and also the discrete one, and uh, uh, you renormalize the time so that they do match with each other. So if you look at the overlap, you start from zero overlap. This is literally zero, you go to one. I mean, that's 0 0.99 something. And you can see that the, if you choose a small time step, and this is exact, which means really, really small time step, then pretty much these two are on top of each other. But the large time step tau equal to one. I mean, that's a different trajectory, but they do converge to the same thing. And, uh, and it doesn't seem like the discrete one is even worse in terms of a mixing time. Uh, and this one, the x-axis, is the Hamiltonian simulation time, which is about measuring the cost. You can see that by choosing the discrete one, uh, you can really gain at least uh, one other magnitude or even more uh, in terms of the cost. So this is uh, one uh, evidence. You can do some other stuff. Uh, for smaller ones, somehow, the, uh, if you look at the same pictures, either through the energy or in terms of the overlap, this seems to be lying on top of each other. This would be the continuous time simulation with a small time step, tau equal 0 0.1. This would be the discrete one, tau equal to 1. Again, the discrete one not only does the job, but also faster in terms of the Hamiltonian simulation time. But this is a picture that's a little bit deceiving because you can look at some other observables too. Uh, for example, I mean, you can look at uh, uh, the trace of uh, some Z operator, or here you just uh, monitor the error of the, uh, uh, the density matrix uh, between the discrete and the continuous one. The error is like a 0 0.3 or something. The error isn't small. But as you progress, as a mix and mix, and the difference becomes smaller and smaller because they are both converging towards the same fixed point. So uh, we also did the spin for Hubbard model. Again, it's not large, and uh, many people in the room could do a better job. And uh, it's also, yeah, maybe it would be very interesting to see how, to, uh, how does the method uh, scale as you, uh, we perform larger problems. And you can see, again, pretty much similar trend. Any question before I start talking about the algorithm? What is R? Uh, R, I, I didn't even talk about it. It's, uh, it's uh, some uh, technical thing. Uh, yeah. uh, Wait, that's the yeah. discrete and uh, continuous start at different levels. Oh, this one? 
Yeah. Uh, because there's a jump. It's a, uh, like a start from zero, and the first step, boom, is already jumped somehow. Uh, maybe the system is too small. Uh, yeah, so TFIM is an integral model, right. so I think that there may be something special happening. Maybe, yeah. Um, but uh, yeah, I mean, uh, we can try other things in the future. Yeah. But, but it's unclear how, how it helps. Uh, and if you're wrong, QP absolutely will fail, right? Yeah. 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 So obviously, this is just some numerics, but it seems like you achieve a very sort of quickly increasing overlap in very short times, and then it sort of starts to taper off. Yeah. If you like lessen the assumption to having, say, constant overlap with the ground state to just having this one overlap. Oh, yeah, yeah. In practice, you should definitely just stop here and run QP. There's no reason why you want to run it to 0 0.9. So, um, but if you can't, I mean, just shows that you can't. Right. Yeah. Okay. So uh, we have seen uh, this is the fifth time <laughs> for today. Uh, yeah. So I mean, Lindblad describes open quantum system, and uh, 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 yeah. So you can write down the solution map. And uh, it's uh, not a unitary map, it's a CPTP, which means that you start from a density operator, you end with a density operator. Uh, let's look at the simple Lindblad dynamics. Uh, Marius, I think last week, uh, during the off workshop week, and talk, suggest all of us to do exercises and with a two by two, four by four, and I think that's a great. And this is even simpler than Marius' suggestion. I think uh, his example is a lot more insightful than mine, but uh, I mean, it's still worth uh, uh, carrying, going through it which is, a, look at the one qubit system, H is uh, Z, and K is uh, some sort of annihilation thing, and you start from this guy, and uh, you wanna, uh, yeah, you wanna go to the, uh, uh, go to the other state. And uh, uh, so, uh, uh, and as, uh, as a, uh, yeah, maybe I should flip, the <laughs> should be a minus Z to really get to the ground state, sorry about that. And uh, then you can analytically just uh, solve it. Uh, it will be useful uh, exercise by hand, and uh, it will converge exponentially to the psi zero, psi zero. Let's uh, uh, think is the ground state. I think Marius posted an extremely interesting question, which is uh, what if uh, this thing is not a Z, but uh, some other stuff, interesting thing would happen, and I uh, wouldn't do the uh, spoiler alert. Uh, so there is uh, some, uh, uh, like uh, uh, interesting, uh, interesting things to observe. Uh, yeah, uh, please uh, think this is minus one. This is a plus one. Then uh, this LK, uh, it actually pushes the high energy states to the low energy states, which means if you plug in the psi one, psi one, you get psi zero, psi zero. And uh, two is that it fixes the ground state. And uh, it, once you are there, it's just stuck and it doesn't move in anywhere else. These two things are absolutely important for the construction of uh, uh, the general algorithm. Uh, another concept is that we hope the Lindblad dynamics is ergodic. Uh, it means that first there exists a fixed point, so that you start from anywhere, it will converge to that thing. Two is uh, we hopefully, oh, maybe ergodic means is not, yeah, so, so there is a mixing time. We hopefully it's even fast mixing, which means T is a poly N, uh, that means you start from any uh, row zero, after this t, then the difference between this and the fixed point is one half the original difference. And you can easily boost this to epsilon precision and you just run it uh, like uh, to t log over one epsilon uh, time and you will see that the error is one over epsilon. And the idea, uh, the error would be epsilon. So the, uh, the importance is once this kind of uh, things uh, is satisfied, then it really doesn't matter where you start from. Uh, you gain uh, like a constant uh, difference. So uh, uh, the insight from the paper we have heard this morning by Andres and uh, uh, Anthony and collaborators is that there is uh, for thermal state preparation, you can construct a number of uh, jump operators and uh, this one is a discretized version, but uh, there is a continuous version of that as well. Uh, you can drive the system to the thermal state. And uh, this is a version of the detailed balance, because I, I, I think I was trying to make some modifications earlier, and in the sense that given Jen Feng's talk, there are so many detailed balance, I was, uh, I was trying to remove this and say there's a version of the detailed balance. 
Uh, and but this one like uh, fixes the uh, thermal state. Okay. And uh, now we want to do this for the ground state. Uh, what you can do is because you have this fast algorithm to prepare the thermal state, uh, you can just uh, prepare a low temperature thermal state, which would be very, very close to your ground state. But this is a, might be a very big waste of the resource because satisfying those quantum detailed balance is hard. Uh, you need a lot of the jump operators and uh, do something very, very careful. You do the QPE, marry the energy very accurately, and uh, do something. But if you just want the ground state, you realize that uh, on one hand, I mean, the conditions are becoming more and more singular. You are doing rho beta inverse, but your distribution, the occupation, is close to 1 to 0, especially the 0 thing uh, uh, creates a lot of trouble when you do the, uh, when you do the inverse. Uh, but also it's uh, unnecessary because you only want to get this one thing in the end. So what, 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 what can you do? Uh, what you can do here is to come up with a particular function. That would be Andres's gamma, roughly. Uh, but you only have a one. So that the positive energy, they're all zero. And you, uh, the negative part it does something else. And you can then define the Fourier, uh, this one to be the Fourier transform of something that is the FS. Then uh, this is the shoveling part. So you write down this K as uh, this FS times the Heisenberg evolution of a coupling matrix A. This A can be very simple, can be just a, some simple poly. It doesn't quite matter. And uh, the reason why it doesn't quite matter, I think, originally comes from this ETH-like uh, idea. Uh, at least that's one of the motivation. Uh, but uh, you can write this by injecting a lot of uh, resolution identities. And this one, well, you can write it in the Fourier representation. This one, you have f hat lambda i minus lambda j. And you express your coupling matrix in the eigenbasis of your Hamiltonian. Okay? Uh, then you have a, uh, uh, because f omega is 0, which means if lambda i minus lambda j is bigger than zero, means you go from low energy states to high energy states, this is forbidden, then you only have high energy to low energy. That's the idea. So uh, the QPE or post-QPE, let's say if you were to do QSVT, you're implementing a matrix function, right? So if the eigenvalue is bigger than something, you set it to be zero, smaller than something, set it to be one, and that's the filtering. That one only applies to one eigenvalue, that's why it's filtering. This one is a shoveling. You're shoveling high energy states to low energy states. You're not implementing a matrix function. So uh, the coupling matrix A can be Hermitian and local, and uh, it shouldn't be some block diagonal in the eigenbasis of H, because then you have uh, some, uh, uh, yeah, uh, uh, then it becomes reducible. If it is not reducible, I mean, that would be a necessary, irreducible is a necessary condition. Otherwise, it's just going to uh, like uh, circle around in some high energy uh, subspace. Then you can explicitly show LK plugging to the, uh, to the ground state is zero. This means the fixes of the ground state. It's pretty trivial. You plug in psi zero here. You can, there's nothing lower than that to go to, so it's zero. That's it. And... Uh, uh, for high energy to low energy states, this is uh, possible. Low energy to high energy states, this is explicitly forbidden. OK, that's the idea. Very simple idea. Question? Uh, so for discretize the dynamic, is this also a fixed point? Same thing. Perfect. Yeah, yeah. I mean, so far I haven't. Uh, so the difference between the uh, uh, discretize and continuous. Part of that is due to you have a coherent part, you have a dissipative part, you need to try to split them. And here I haven't even talked about the coherent part yet. Uh, again, from a mixing time perspective, it's not quite obvious why the coherent part helps, uh, how the coherent part can help, but numerically, coherent part helps a lot. And I think that's uh, uh, like one thing that is uh, very much worth understanding. So should we think of A as basically determining most of the performance, like you know, mixing time. Right. Is what, yeah. Uh, right. So, so it sounds like we're just uh, 
uh, calling H0 in the adiabatic evolution just called a different name A, but actually no, uh, because uh, in the case of uh, adiabatic evolution, your H0 has to be chosen meticulously so that along the whole path, there is a gap, right? Which is not obvious how to do that at all. A, as long as, I mean, you shouldn't choose that to fix some symmetry, so on and so forth, but uh, the physical intuitions, you just choose some arbitrary stuff. That's uh, arbitrary enough, it's going to be okay. Yeah, can you explain that intuition a little more? Like, why, why is it yeah, uh, so the, reasonable you could choose an A such that there's only one? Um, yeah, so the intuition is this. All you want is to shovel. Means that these things cannot be zero. But what these are doesn't quite matter. See what I'm saying? So, so this part does the job of shoveling. You don't shovel back. That's by design. And this one just say, hey, this shouldn't be a dark state. You should allow me to make the transfer of the energy. Why do you stick for a single A? You could, it, it's a discrete time evolution, so in every, every step you could just flip a coin and choose. You could, either. yeah, that's the uh, ETH uh, type of thing that allows you to prove a little bit of something. Yeah, you, you can every time flip a coin as well. Just one remark, right, since you mentioned my example, which is of course stolen from um, atom arrays. It's super important that this K is not really self-adjoint. Because, you know, oh yeah, thank you. We try to understand self joint and you know stuck in that bubble, yeah. but this one has more than zero ones. Yeah, yeah. And that is somehow magic. Absolutely, yeah. I mean, as you said, I mean, you have this result of no go if there's a permission, right, or self joint. And uh, here, this one, the uh, it is asymmetric in the Fourier space, which gives you a real and imaginary part in the real space. This is absolutely important. Otherwise, it doesn't work at all. Absolutely crucial. Okay, so uh, one construction is uh, uh, in the paper. There's more technical one, but this is explicit, and uh, uh, you can roughly what you want to do is to come up with f hat omega. This is in the Fourier space. Here is the O zero, and this one the distance should be it should go from zero to one. One is arbitrary from zero to one within distance gap. And uh, this part, it dials down uh, around maybe two times uh, the spectral norm, roughly. And in the Fourier transform, you will get something with a real and imaginary part. This is the absolute value. And you can do a truncation. This truncation is roughly around one over delta, the gap. OK, so this is an explicit construction. All the numerical results shown before use this example. So it's explicit, no variational whatsoever. And all the A's are chosen to be either some poly Z or some, uh, in the case of uh, Harvard model, is just some uh, simple current like operator CI, uh, like hopping like thing, CI dagger CI plus one. Yeah, so they are all very simple stuff. Um, uh, sorry. So the. Um, as I said, this is the new method. There is only one jump operator. You can choose more. Um, uh, this fixes the ground state. And what it does is to, by design, push high energy states towards low energy states. And now it's time to simulate. Uh, generically, uh, the first work, uh, this is probably by Isert's Isert group, quantum uh, uh, church, church uh, 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 yeah, uh, so sorry, quantum church Turing uh, hypothesis, and uh, that's a PIL in uh, uh, 2011, and the cost is T squared over epsilon. Then Charles and uh, uh, Tongyang Li, they improved that to, uh, did a quadratic improvement. Cleveland Cle one, uh, yeah, we have heard from Shen Tao's talk, improved this, and also Andres' talk, to uh, T polylog T over epsilon. And we just heard the last hour that uh, there is uh, this uh, very nice paper by Shen Tao and Chun Hao Wang. Uh, also, there is uh, the T polylog T over epsilon. It's a simplified implementation, but uh, I would say maybe there is further room for further sim there is room for further simplification. And uh, 
also has uh, reduced the gate complexity in the number of jump operator. Also, this uh, paper by uh, uh, Andrush and uh, Anthony at all, and has a new way of doing the cleave and the one. But uh, there is still uh, room to design new algorithms in the current context because the jump is pretty complicated. <laughs> it's not just uh, some poly, and uh, this is actually the main, where the main work goes. Another thing is we only need the fixed point and not the dynamics. The two things are not completely decoupled, but uh, uh, we should uh, keep in mind that uh, we can uh, uh, sacrifice something along the dynamical aspect as long as we preserve the fixed point. Uh, so the, I don't have much time, so let me quickly say that uh, simulation, first of all, you do a first order trotter. You can do a little bit better uh, than that, but uh, not that much better. Uh, you separate the coherent and the, uh, the dissipative part, and this is not a unitary. You need to do something. The simplest idea is to use the idea from Cleveland 1. Uh, and uh, this one, actually, if you uh, never wrote this down, it's very worth writing it down at least once. You will find that this is a, this quantum implementation, which does a Hamiltonian evolution and uh, trace it out and discard. This is exactly the implementation of the quantum jump on rivalry method. So with a, uh, if you measure 0, this is uh, the dissipative part. If you measure 1, this is the jump part. So it's uh, exactly that. Uh, up to t square uh, or the tau square, and uh, this one implements uh, the uh, the uh, this thing conceptually. Now the question is, how do you do the uh, uh, simulate this Hermitian, which is the dilated version of the jump operator? The jump operator first step is to do a quadrature. Uh, so you uh, uh, do a linear combination, and uh, this becomes many of these terms. Looks like a monster. It sounds like it calls for a linear combination of unitary and then you implement it, but this goes against our idea of simulating it with a single ancilla or towards this early fault tolerant thing. So let's do a second order trotter. Uh, you can do, a, uh, uh, by the way, second order trotter is important because first order trotter, you have the square root of t, the, 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 the error will be too large. So you do a second order trotter. Uh, second order trotter, one way to implement that is just to go one direction from L to capital, a small one to capital L and uh, flip it back. And uh, for each of them, you have a, a bunch of sum. You further trotterize it, and uh, 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 you get uh, some terms uh, coming from uh, coming from uh, one thing comes from this Hamiltonian simulation. It just goes down, and the other is uh, this uh, Hermitianized version of A which you can simulate because it's simple. Uh, well, it's hard to do. Sometimes it's just hard to do algebra uh, like, a, like a, this fast. But roughly speaking, you will end up with a term that something that look like this. It sounds like there are a lot of long time Hamiltonian, Hamiltonian simulation go, going on. But because this is a, uh, the Heisenberg picture, the time from IE to the IA minus IHSL would almost cancel with the next step, which is e to the plus i h s l minus 1. So because of this cancellation, every step of the simulation, you only deal with the short time simulation. You just cancel out with each other very nicely. And then you end up with a pretty clean circuit. right? This is an explicit circuit, no need of amplitude amplification, no whatsoever, and uh, one silla qubit. The one silla qubit is because you need to dilate the jump operator by an uh, silla. And uh, so this one, you do an uncontrolled Hamiltonian simulation for short time. Both are important things. And then this one looks complicated, but it is nothing but a rotated single poly or something. It's very simple to implement. Boom, 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 boom. Each one of them is called the W squared of tau. You measure. You, no matter what you obtain, you discard it as if it never happened. Reset this to zero and continue. That's the algorithm. OK? You can literally just uh, implement it today. And uh, I mean, it works. So yeah. What's the post-selection uh, like condition? Like how, how much do you lose on that dis discard? How much do you lose? Yeah, that's the error analysis part. And I showed you earlier. You actually don't lose that much. So. OK, so this is the continuous time one. Yeah. Uh, so you're already doing some kind of randomization, right? So what if you random randomly apply the K term. Excellent question. I don't know. Maybe it's, uh, maybe you should do that. 
But uh, if you do random thing, you don't have this cancellation. You, I don't think the Hamiltonian simulation time will be smaller, but maybe the, the, the uh, or the depth will be shorter because uh, assuming there's no fast forwarding. But uh, uh, if there is fast forwarding and you do random, maybe it's even better. Yeah, or maybe it's just a different uh, CPTP map. Actually. It's a different CPTP map with a different mixing. Yeah, pointers. numerous questions one can ask. Yeah, you're right. Okay, so this would be the continuous one. Discrete one is nothing but taking a large step, time step, as if nothing has happened. But it just fixes because this, it, both parts fixes the ground state, so everything goes through. Yeah, and one technical thing is uh, when you do simulate this guy, you might need to do a bit of trotter. This is the R. So uh, to control the trotter error. That one you cannot ignore. Uh, the, the splitting error you can ignore, trotter error. Uh, the, the, this part of the splitting error you can ignore, but this part of the splitting error you cannot ignore. Uh, yeah. uh, no, you, you choose your A. You don't control A. Uh, you, you, you choose A, you don't know the mixing time. At least now you don't know it. But uh, you have a full control. No, no, A is a poly, poly X. Oh, yeah. Let's say one qubit of poly X. That's where, remember, Anthony has this picture, quasi-local uh, light cone. Yeah, so you choose a local thing. So uh, maybe a stupid question, but like, what are the properties of K for your examples, for example? Like, is it uh, sparse? Is it what structure? K is not. Uh, a is very sparse. After the uh, linear combination with the Heisenberg evolution, it just becomes everywhere, right? But because otherwise, it's impossible for this thing to yeah prepare. But does the, the does the choice of A impact the structure of K? A little bit, yeah. A little bit. So um, I have a question about like the complexity we got here. So this, I guess you're trying to prepare like some cross state of certain systems. And this is just like a one example. Like you show us, you can do this very efficiently, you did the simulation time, etc. But I just wonder how we can compare those results in an end to end manner. Like if you want to prepare like the ground energy ground state at the same level of accuracy, how do you compare with the complex? This is end to end, right? As long as the mixes, you simulate this thing to the mixing time, and uh, yeah, you get a pretty good uh, state, and let's say with a at least a 0 0.5 overlap with the true ground state, and then you do whatever you want. Right, but I imagine there could still be other like parameters, like the spectrum gap or something. Uh, oh yeah, so so that's the uh, the beginning. There is uh, uh, the the main results. I uh, so this one has a delta inverse, the absolute gap, and this one has a uh, this one has a relative gap. Okay. Yeah, which is uh, also a big improvement. Okay, conclusion. So. Uh, um, yeah, so open quantum system, I, th I think it's really nice in the sense that, at least for me, it's always uh, seems to me the, the uh, before it is like, uh, really you have a real system, you have a real environment, but this one's really just algorithm, right? It's an algorithmic tool for you to design algorithms that are supposed to be for closed systems. I think that to me, at least, uh, has a lot of appeal. Uh, and uh, one, I think, potential candidate for ground state preparation is almost, it's almost, it is already fault tolerant, I would say. I mean, I don't see why it isn't. And because uh, you can simulate uh, with one Silla qubit with a simple gate. And uh, well, this is a big assumption. But uh, I think there are also many other uh, questions one can ask. Uh, yeah, so whether non markoving can help, uh, I mean, can further help, uh, or what does the coherent contribution really do? It's not clear from the theory. Maybe you can even variationalize and uh, lead to new variational algorithms. Or how do you add more jump operators to uh, uh, further reduce the mixing time? I think there are many, many questions. There are many, many questions one can ask. And uh, thank you for your attention. <laughs>